Hi guys, this is Grizzly again with another pen review, and today we're going to have a look at a Graf von Faber-Castell pen. I've already reviewed quite a number of Faber-Castell pens, but as far as I can remember, I've never ever yet had a look at a Graf von Faber-Castell pen. Time to change that. Many thanks to the kind folks over there at penoblo.de who have sent me this Graf von Faber-Castell Guilloche Fountain Pen for review. Thanks, I appreciate it a lot. What we're looking at right here is the Graf von Faber-Castell Guilloche in black. The pen is available in a number of different other colors, such as turquoise, orange, red, and so on, for instance. Guys, before we deep dive into the pen, let's have a look at the packaging just real quick. The pen comes in a white outer sleeve, a gift box right here, slides out of that like this. Out comes a box saying Graf von Faber-Castell, having the Graf von Faber-Castell logo, a crest right on here. The box is colored in a sort of beige chamois color with some yeah, paper fiber or something like that in here. Looks a little bit like vintage leather, uh, vintage leather letter paper. That's what I'm supposed to say. And it does then open like that, a flap. It's a magnetic closure. Says simplicity and style, exceptional materials and timeless design, handmade in Germany with passion for detail. Opens up like that, says the same thing in a few other languages. Very elegant packaging. You get a cloth pouch right here, saying also Graf von Faber-Castell, same beige color. You then have a little booklet saying Graf von Faber-Castell, handmade in Germany, warranty filling information, information about all other kinds of accessories and writing implements. And then you do get a converter. I have, uh, or yeah, a converter. I have the fi pen filled with cartridges at the moment. The converter is also Graf von Faber-Castell branded. However, it does look like a Schmidt converter to me. And then it does have a little spiral in here that's supposed to break up the surface tension of the ink so that the ink will flow a little better. Right, pen itself. That's what it looks like. Very iconic, very unique, very elegant. I'd say it is unmistakably a Graf von Faber-Castell. There is no other pen or no other pen brand making anything alike. That unmistakably Graf von Faber-Castell. Let's cover that pen top to bottom. Iconic, of course, is the cap. You can already see it is highly reflective. It glitters and reflects right here in the light. A chrome cap with this, yeah, almost crown-like top. That's what it looks like. Some knurling right around this crown that flares out like this. Has a small dent right in here. Feels very soft, very nice, very beautiful. You do find the Graf von Faber-Castell logo right atop here then. The crest with the crown, very iconic. You can uh, distinguish or sort of like see a Graf von Faber-Castell pen just by this little thing here. The perfect pencil also does have this distinguishing uh, design item right here. You then have like an equally unmistakable clip ski slope style hinged spring loaded very very nice to use flaring out like that super easy to slide into a pen pouch or into a shirt pocket but it does then have some ridges down there that actually sort of like provide some additional grip and do prevent the pen from sliding out of your pen pocket. So you do have sufficient tension right here. You have a engraving in the cap here saying Graf von Faber-Castell, handmade in Germany. Also up here, this 
logo here seems to be laser engraved so that is not screen printed that will not wear off i would assume i'm not a hundred percent certain but i do think it's laser engraved right and then you have the cap sitting on the barrel here there's a wee bit of wiggle room right here not super tight tolerances but still good enough i would say and uh, then you have the black barrel here as said it's available in a number of other colors if black is not what you're looking for this is also engraved right here very nice guilloche finish if you hold the pen a little bit out of the light the pen just appears black and you do then see the detail when you pay, bring the pen closer or when the light falls onto the pen just in the right way at the end of the pen, you have a silver end knob or something like that with some knurling on here as well, mirroring the knurling on the cap. It's not a piston filler, even though it does look like a piston turning knob, as said and as shown. It's a cartridge converter filler. You've already seen, seen it's a pop-off cap. Inside the cap, there is plastic preventing the nib from drying out. Works very well i never had that nib drying out on me you see a fairly long section here uh, that's also a distinguishing distinguishing design element fairly long section in comparison to the overall pen the section does flare out right here has a little bit of an hourglass shape you also do see it's a chrome section highly reflective and unfortunately for me a very very slippery section but that's me i tend to get a little bit wettish hands when writing if you don't have a problem with that then maybe this section is all right for you i also don't really get along with the sections of lamy studios and such things so to me it's a bit slippery bear that in mind when looking into this pen also the pen is a fairly skinny pen a fairly thin pen here is a regular Graf von Faber-Castell pencil in comparison. So if you do like beefier pens, then this may not be the pen for you. As you can see right here in the comparison, this is a almost uh, pencil with pen. Please ignore my sloppy pen uh, pencil hand sharpening skills right here. You do then see a, in relation to the pen, quite nicely proportioned, beautiful 18 karat gold nib, plated, that's why it's not gold, um, F for fine, 18 karat, 750 for the gold content, very nice lines here, very nice nib design, quite wide nib shoulders, I do like that a lot. Again, the Faber-Castell logo right here, the crest with the crown, feet down here. Pen screws open like that. I need to use my t-shirt because the section is a little bit slippery, so I couldn't screw the pen open right here. I use a Carandash idyllic blue converter right here, metal threads right here, and then... You can't really see it here in the light. Yeah, maybe you see it a little bit. I mean, you can see that it's a hand-finished pen. Very nice build quality. Really great. The pen, guys, is actually quite lightweight. This is a resin barrel that literally weighs nothing. So it's a very, very lightweight pen. Let's screw that barrel back onto the section here. And do a size comparison. As we do a size comparison, let me talk about the price of the pen for a second. The pen costs around 320, 330 euros, which to be honest, for a um, flagship brand, Graf und Faber-Castell, Faber-Castell, so Graf und Faber-Castell is like the upmarket, is an upmarket brand. It's a handmade pen. Many parts of the pen at least are handmade or hand assembled so um price comparison guys 320 euro a pelican m600 or a pelican m400 price wise the graph on faber castell lays sort of smack in the middle so i do think you get a pen with the 18 karat gold nib you get an upmarket brand i think the price is quite all right in terms of size 
I would say when capped, the Graf von Faber Castell is very close to the Pelican M600. Let's uncap the pen real quick and see what that looks like. I'll also do a size comparison to the Pelican, uh, to the Lamy Safari in a second. Yeah, it's a, a fairly close match to a M600. I would say the M600 is even uncapped a little bit shorter. Here you have a M400, which then will be quite a bit shorter. All right, let's do the same game now with my standard size reference pen, which is a Lamy Safari. Lamy Safari capped quite a bit longer, uncapped, and I'll let you have a look at the section in a minute as well. That's what it looks like. That's the picture you get. Lamy Safari, also a tad longer. So uncapped, here is the section. You see that the section is a bit thinner than the Lamy Safari section. So guys, uncapped, um, this is a pretty short pen as we have seen. But uh, capped, I mean, of course, capped, it's a pretty short pen, as we have seen. But uncapped, it's actually a pretty large pen because the pen at a cap sits so deep on the barrel. And that's what makes this pen actually also a really, really good shirt pocket pen. Last but not least, before we hop into a writing sample, yes, sure, you can post the cap onto the pen, but the whole thing gets fairly long it doesn't get overly back heavy for some reason it gets a bit back heavy but not crazy but i just think it gets a little bit unwieldy so i would just always write this pen look at the beautiful proportions unposted writing sample here we are rhodium paper let's just zoom in a little bit there's actually a fairly interesting nib fine right here Nip comes up straight away. It's a fairly interesting nip because it has a good amount of bounce to it. Like, I mean, it writes slightly feedbacky, almost a little bit sailorish, and I think you can hear that. But without even applying a lot of pressure, you get a decent amount of line variation and some beautiful spring and bounce out of that nip. Let me show you that right here. So this is with no pressure at all. Very lovely, fine nip, true to the size fine nip. Let me apply just a tad of pressure. And that's what you're already getting. And I do see, I do think that you can see the nip bouncing and flexing right here. That is really not difficult to achieve. Graf und Farbe Castell. Giosch. Fine nib. Wetness. Medium to wet, I would say. It's a very lovely writing nib. I really do like writing with this pen. As said, it's slightly feedbacky, but the pleasant sailor type of feedback, I would say, as it offers some really nice bounce and a cushioned writing experience. If you just press a little bit, again, no pressure, just a little bit of pressure, and you get some really nice line variation out of the pen. I wouldn't write with that pen all the time because it's not what it's meant for. But if you want for your signature or so, that's what you can get. Guys, that was that with the Graf von Faber Castell Giosch. Thanks again for uh, to penoblo.de for shipping this one here over for review. And I'll see you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.